the gifts of the Spirit for a new generation, and this is chapter six, the utterance gifts. So can you tell us a little bit about these gifts? Give us a peek into the utterance gifts. Okay, delighted to. I hope you're enjoying the book so far. These utterance gifts, first thing I would say is the utterance gifts, I call them the on-ramp to the highway of the supernatural. These are where most of us kind of get started in learning how to partner with the Holy Spirit because it's so much akin to praying in the Spirit, worship, and prayer. When we learn and cultivate the ability to pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit praying through us, then it's only natural that He can begin to speak through us in these ways. So the utterance gifts are wonderful for you to begin to experiment, yes, experiment, in the love of God to touch people. And again, uh, it's not about whether or not you get it all right, say it perfectly. It's whether or not they feel loved when you do it. So I want to take you to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, and it gives us this essence. Pursue love and earnestly desire spiritual gifts. It seems like the church does anything but desire spiritual gifts. We desire to learn techniques and skills and, and homiletics, and all those things are good in their place. But when it comes to grabbing someone's heart, and letting them know that God loves them, it takes something supernatural. And so this, he says, especially that you may prophesy, okay? He says, covet the gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. Why is that? Well, he goes on to explain that prophecy is God's word that edifies all the hearers. And so this is what he wants. He wants all of us to be built up and strengthened. So here's the key idea uh, in prophecy, Diverse kinds of tongues or various languages by the Spirit, and then the interpretation of tongues. These are all articulated. They all come through our mouth. And, and this is the important thing we want to see, is that these gifts say something that reveal the Father's heart towards a person. They also will reveal something about the person to get the person's attention. Great. So put this in perspective for us. For us. Can you give us a, like a thumbnail sketch of each of these gifts? Well, let's look at it. One of the, one of the numerous examples that we talk about uh, in the scriptures uh, is how Paul articulates these multitude of gifts. We're talking about nine manifestations of the Spirit. And I want to take you back just a second before I answer that question to, to tie in two different things. One of what Jesus says in John 16 and then what Paul says. Uh, or in, in John chapter 7, Jesus says, Come to me, those that are weary, and, and out of your belly, the word for your spirit, out of your spirit man will flow rivers of living water. Now think about these. Gifts of utterance, gifts of revelation, and gifts of, what am I missing? Power. power, yes. Gifts of power, gifts of revelation, gifts of utterance. Think about these as the rivers that are flowing out of your innermost being. Rivers of power, rivers of utterance, and rivers of revelation. So what's the gift of prophecy? The gift of prophecy is a supernatural utterance in a known language, a language that the hearer understands of something in the mind of God that's going to bring edification, exhortation, and comfort to the hearers. God's going to speak through someone to lift everyone else to cause our attention to be lifted up from above our circumstances to look at him. And he's going to say, this is the way. I've prepared the way. Keep your eyes on me. And, and the word of prophecy, in, as is true for all of these gifts, but especially these utterance gifts, is edification, exhortation, and comfort. And then you have diverse kinds of tongues. This is a language that you have not learned how to speak with your mind. It's a supernatural endowment for an occasion that allows you to speak something that makes room for something God wants to say. Uh, so diverse kinds of tongues is the same function as your prayer language. When you're praying in the Spirit, it just has a different application. When I'm praying in the Spirit, Paul says, I'm speaking to God, not to men. When I'm Moved by the Holy Spirit in a diverse kind of tongue, I'm bringing a message from God to men. That's the difference. One is coming from the Father to encourage people. The other is my own heart feeding and feasting uh, with an intimate relationship with God. So prophecy, then the diverse kind of tongue kind of makes room. It doesn't trump everything else, but it says God wants to speak to us. 
Then there's the interpretation of that tongue. Notice the scripture doesn't talk about the translation of the tongue. This is not a word for word translation from one language to another. This is the interpretation or the spirit's sense of what he wants to say to the people. It will, you'll hear some uh, words, diverse kinds of tongues that may be 30 seconds long, and then the interpretation is two minutes long. You say, well, that didn't, that didn't seem right. One is short, one's long. It's not a translation. It's an interpretation. It's the Spirit speaking through someone to give the sense of how the Holy Spirit wants to encourage the body. And Paul says, when these two work together, when diverse tongues and interpretation of tongues work together, it's equal uh, to prophecy. So in the book, you also make a distinction between inspirational prophecy and revelational prophecy. Can you break that down for us? What's the difference? Yeah, and, and I haven't heard too many people talk about this. This may be one of the few places that you'll ever find this idea. But, but Paul talks to us about the fact, as we've said, that these gifts function their purpose and their guidelines, the borders, the, the, the ground rules for the manifestation of the Spirit, and especially these utterance gifts, is that they edify people. It's not judgment. It's not condemnation. It's not woe is, and, and this is going to come on you if you don't do this. It's edification, exhortation, and encouragement. And then Paul says this, you may all prophesy like this. You may all be used by the Holy Spirit to encourage one another, edify one another, build up one another by the Spirit. But there's another kind of prophecy. We call that inspirational prophecy. Another kind of prophecy that flows through those that stand in the office gift of a prophet. And a prophet, that is, the Holy Spirit uses them in a position of authority. A prophet may speak not only edification, exhortation, and comfort, but a prophet may speak to a nation. Uh, like Jonah spoke to, to Nineveh. God's giving you a chance. God's giving you a wisdom, a, a window of mercy. If you don't take that chance, then this is what's going to happen. There's going to be consequences to your disobedience. Not everyone has permission to do that kind of prophecy. That is to prophesy to nations, to prophesy to cities, to prophesy to, to prime ministers or presidents or, or those in governing authorities. God raises up some that do that in a special way. And so we need to learn the distinction between inspirational prophecy, which we may all participate in, and revelational prophecy, which is through the office of the prophet. And so this is one of the challenges that we'll always face is, which, which is this? And, and for us, it's simple. For all of us, how do I receive what I sense that I'm hearing from the Lord and put it in a container that is encouraging and edifying and comforting? So this is, again, a place where it's very important that how you make the distinction between the gifts of the Father, the gifts of the Son, where that would be the office of the prophet, mm -hmm. and the gifts of the Spirit, the manifestation of the Spirit for yes. edification, yes. exhortation, and comfort. Very well said. When Jesus gives gifts to the church, that word is not charis, as it is here in 1 Corinthians 12, a grace gift. That word is domata, a dominion or an oversight gift. And through that, these, these leadership gifts, equipping gifts, are also equipped with a tool belt of authority that allows them to speak in larger jurisdictions and larger authority. And we need to understand that so that we're not uh, trying to prophesy beyond our jurisdiction, we can get ourselves in trouble. So I hope you read that, listen to the Lord, ask him what he's saying to you about it, and understand that if you just do that in a way that blesses people and helps people know they love them, even if you don't get all the details right, that's not going to make or break your ministry. It's that you let them see the love of God. I hope you enjoy the chapter. And then take opportunities. Ask the Holy Spirit to use you in prophesying to others the purposes, the goal that's in them. Pull out the goal that's in somebody. You see something in there that's their strength. Pull that out. Declare the word of the Lord. And you don't have to say, thus saith the Lord God. I'm prophesying to you. You can just talk in your normal tone of voice and just say, the Father really loves you, and here's what I'm hearing about you. And that'll be a blessing to people. Have a good one in the chapter.